Hey guys, it's Mia Senve here. I am joined with Yue, and we are doing a special awesome video uh, that is going to be entitled Q and A. So I have received frequent questions over the months slash weeks slash days amounts of time and a lot of them kind of are the same so I thought it'd be good to do a Q&A video with some of the questions that I've received over time that are very similar that maybe would be good to put in a video so other people that may have the same question will kind of know my answers to them if they were wondering. So I have generated a list of frequently asked questions on a very sophisticated work, Word document and I will be reading them. I don't have any particular names with the questions. They're kind of questions that I just have been getting a lot recently and I'm just going to answer it in general. But I know a lot of you have asked them and so I hope that the responses I've given you back in comment form have helped and I hope this video will help other people that have been wondering the same question. Question number one. Which doll should I get? Which doll size is the best? This question gets asked a lot and the same response I give out 95% of the time is it boils down to what you prefer. I don't think there's a set generic size company doll for any specific person. It's pretty much whatever catches your eye, you know, that gut feeling that you have. That is generally what I tell you that you should go with because usually at some stage in your BJD researching time, there's a doll that you see and you keep on going back to it. You've favorited pictures of it on your DeviantArt. You've looked it up a bajillion times in Google search trying to find other people that have molds that are similar like it. It's on your head. It, it's in your mind, you know, so you know that you want that doll. So, whatever size it is, whatever company it's from, that's the doll that you really want. And I can't tell you that, oh, well, you know, your doll that you're going to want is going to be a Dream of Doll Duncan. Mm -hmm. Even though he's a very schmexy doll, I can't tell you that, yeah, he's going to be the doll for you. Because you don't know. Some people are really, really in love with tinies. And some people, like my friend Rockin Ichigo, are obsessed with the huge toddler-like dolls that are like 75 centimeters and you could practically put them in a stroller. It varies from person to person. I personally am an SD girl. I love my dolls to the 60 centimeter range. Um, and I do occasionally love the tinies because they're just so cute and you can shove them in a purse and you can take them anywhere you want and they're just cute! Question number two that I get asked frequently are usually about Obitsu dolls and the most frequent questions that I've received recently would be about Obitsu heads and bodies. <gasps> so, Obitsu heads. Um, the questions that I've randomly got asked for this genre of doll usually are talking about the wigs and I actually do have a person that asked me about the wigs. So always be kindful, um, asked me a question about the dolls and they wanted to ask what size wigs do 21 to 23 heads wear? So right here I have a 27 centimeter, this is like a Parabox wig and these wigs, the size that they have if you go with the scales for wig sizes for your normal other higher bigger dolls, UA is wearing currently like an 8 to 9 inch wig. These guys are considered like 3 to 4 inch wigs. These are pretty standard for the 21s and 27 centimeter heads. Um, I can show you a couple of examples here. This is actually a male head. This is for the normal type 27 body. This is also another 27 head. I have a couple of Parabox heads that are in here that are like the 21s and the wigs when you put them on there on the 21 heads it slips right on it'll work it's just fine. For your bigger heads you do have to maneuver it on there a little bit 
but same story it will fit right on there as well he's a beautiful man with green hair the next fun question that I get asked a lot is on yellowing. I am not a yellowing expert. I can tell you things that can help you prevent it from occurring faster to your dolls, and that would be by one, keep your dolls away from the sun and direct sunlight. Two, spray your dolls regularly with MSC. MSC uh, is Mr. Super Clear for those of you who may not know. They do have a UV protectant one as well that costs a couple dollars extra, which I firmly believe in getting because these are very expensive dolls and you do not want them to be harmed. So might as well kick in those extra bucks to get something that will help your dolls and keep them nice and happy and safe. As far as reversing yellowing that is already there, I have not experimented with anything of that sort yet. There are a bunch of forums on DOA that you can definitely check out and read for yourself and see what people do. I've heard of people doing things like baking soda and peroxide and there's been people out there that sand off layers of their dolls. I don't know about that one. Uh, there's a bunch of different things that DOA has up on their forums that I will be more than happy to do in the links below in the comment bar thingy down there. Um, and you can read for yourself to see what people have done to reverse yellowing. But as far as I know, it's just an inevitable thing that will happen. You can try your best to slow it down and lessen it, but it's going to happen. Don't worry though, it's not going to be like you're going to wake up one day and then, whoa, she's yellow. It's just that it happens over time. I'm talking like years of time. And as long as you try your best to, you know, keep your dolls protected, sprayed away from the sun, it should not occur too fast. Um, but yeah, that's all I can think of for yelling. Hope that helps people out that have been asking about yelling. Another fun question that I get asked is face-up materials. Face-up materials vary from artist to artiste. I have seen, and I have a personal friend that does amazing work. And the paints she uses are those 99 cent apple barrel paints at Walmart. She literally buys those and she just produces amazing work. Um, I've heard counters to apple barrel paints and other paints that are really, you know, quick and cheap to buy. I've heard stories about people saying that don't use those paints because the pigment is way different, it can stain the dolls, you know. Um, you should use something that is, you know, I don't know, more water-based and less pigment. It varies. Personally, what I use for my dolls is Liquitex paints. I find them to be really easy to work with and they come off really easy. I also use chalk pastels. When I say chalk pastels, I mean like the actual chalky pastels. Let me get you some. So this is my happy box of chalk pastels. They are the Mungyo brand. I love these pastels. They are super cool, um, but they are just a soft pastel. They are not oil pastels. They are not oil crayons. Nothing with oil because those are bad for your doll. Those can stain your doll and you will be very sad. Um, so definitely use soft pastels, anything that is just, you know, happy and chalk-like. You don't want to use anything that has any weird added stuff because it could damage your doll. So use soft pastels. This is a little tube of the paint that I use. This is the Liquitex paint. I bought it in a set of like four or five different colors and like I said, they're really nice to work with. They come off really easily. It's an acrylic paint, so that means it's water-based, so it'll come off if you're doing the face-up while you're working on it or whatever. You can just get a little bit of water and just, just take it off. Um, but yes, these are basic things that I use. I also use watercolor pencils on my dolls. I also use an acrylic gloss on my dolls to do the lips and, and part thingies of their eyes. So I said, but what do I use to clean up a doll's face? I use Winsor & Newton Brush Cleaner and Restore for acrylic paints. 
uh, very important for acrylic paints because there is other ones that are like for oil paints. This is for acrylic paints. That's what you want. I also use Magic Clean erasers. This is actually a part of a Magic Clean eraser because I usually tear mine in little pieces and I use them like that. So, yes. This